Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm currently outside the Prince Alfred Square stop. So this is part three of my current Parramatta light rail update series. So in this video, I'm going to continue through North Parramatta all the way to the Westmead stop. Now in this video, you're going to see more new overhead wire structures. You're going to see more green track, wire free sections, and also a couple of stops that have island platforms. So in the previous two videos, links in the description, I've covered the line from Carlingford to Prince Alfred Square. So in this video, I'm going to briefly revisit the Church Street stop, spend a little more time around the Prince Alfred Square stop, and then cover the remainder of the line to Westmead. All the footage was taken on either the 28th of August or the 18th of September, unless mentioned otherwise. Church Street is the first stop to get a red sign with its name. And it's also the first stop to get the L sign for light rail too. These signs went in during the first two weeks of September. Now just north of Market Street, and the first two overhead wire poles are just north of the Market Street junction. This will allow a short overlap with the wire free section which ends at the Prince Alfred Square stop. The next pole, complete with a long cantilever arm, is just south of this stop. String is currently keeping this cantilever arm horizontal until the overhead wires are attached to it. The next overhead wire structure is within the stop itself. The two cantilever arms are also being kept horizontal using pieces of string attached to the nearby street lighting poles. This is the Prince Alfred Square stop looking south. You can see the overhead wire structures within this stop and south of it. Trams heading south will switch to battery power at this stop, so this sign will remind drivers to lower the pantograph, as leaving it up through the Parramatta CBD would not look cool. At the north end, there is no sign to raise the pantograph as yet, although there is a bus sign. I'm not sure what that's for. This next section from Prince Alfred Square through North Parramatta is street running with overhead wires, so I've marked this in red on the map. And immediately north of the Prince Alfred Square stop is the busy Victoria Road. Between Market Street and Victoria Road, there is one lane for other traffic on the east side of the tram tracks, and road vehicles using this lane must turn right into Victoria Road. Church Street north of Victoria Road has a single lane on either side of the tram tracks for road vehicles. Only eastbound traffic on Victoria Road can access this part of Church Street by turning left. And southbound Church Street traffic must turn left into Victoria Road. Restricting the number of other traffic movements should reduce the red traffic light phase for trams. This is how the Victoria Road intersection looked in February 2022. Now just north of the Victoria Road intersection, and you get a better view of the two tram tracks in the middle and the single lanes on either side for road vehicles. Back in February 2022, this road was still closed, with the tram tracks complete and work to finish the two new traffic lanes continuing. Here is another flood marker, but only up to one metre this time. The tracks then go past Ross Street, but there are no traffic lights here. On the west side, Ross Street is left turn only into and out of this road. And on the east side, it's one way towards Church Street, with a left turn only at the end, so this avoids any conflicts with the tram tracks. Now back on the west side, and on this corner of Ross Street and Church Street, there used to be a pub called the Royal Oak Hotel, along with the Heritage Cobb & Co stables, which as you can see is still there. This plaque is on the side of the stables. The Royal Oak Hotel was demolished to provide enough space for the tram tracks, two road lanes and paths on either side, but that doesn't mean that it's forgotten. As it is now etched in the pavement alongside where it used to be, and as you can see, it has a lot of history. And here is the Royal Oak Hotel in 2018, courtesy of Google Street View. You can also see the stables building behind it. And now some more views of the pavement etchings. If you have fond memories of the Royal Oak Hotel, then do share these in the comments below. The other buildings on this part of Church Street, such as this pizza takeaway building, are further back from the road. However, the Royal Oak Hotel was much closer to the road, and you can see how tight this space was, with four narrow traffic lanes and not a lot of pavement on the left side. Now looking south, and you can see the stables on the right, along with Ross Street, and in the distance, the Victoria Road intersection. Now continuing north and on a slight ascent, the edges of the track bed are raised to provide a slight physical barrier with the vehicle lanes on either side. As the tram tracks have the red tram only markings at each intersection, it's puzzling to see the double white lines down the middle. No overhead wire poles as yet, although overhead catenary could be added to the existing poles that are being used for street lighting. 
If you look closely, there seems to be some fixings below the street light where overhead wire structures could go. Now it's the intersection with Gross Street, which now has all the new traffic signals with tram filters. All turns are possible here, except for right into Gross Street heading east. This is how it looked in February 2022, before the new traffic lights went in. This is how the Gross Street intersection looked in 2018. And north of Gross Street, Church Street used to have bus lanes on either side. So the bus lanes became standard road lanes, and the road lanes became tram tracks. And Church Street continues to ascend. Coming into view is the first overhead wire pole and cantilever arm since the Prince Alfred Square stop. The long cantilever arm that spans both tracks is also being held horizontally by string attached to the street lighting pole on the other side. This is one of several no cycle markings on right turning lanes that I noticed. You can also see another pole with a long cantilever arm which is facing the other way. Now at the Fennel Street junction and on the west side Fennel Street is left turn into this road only and one way. And on the east side is left turn in and left turn out. And these traffic lights are for a pedestrian crossing just north of Fennel Street, which is also where the next stop is. In 2017, this part of Church Street had four lanes, including two for buses. Fennel Street crosses just here. This car park on the left and the petrol station further up have since gone. I believe these went to make Church Street wide enough for tram tracks, road lanes and pedestrian paths, and the blue Parramatta light rail hoardings seem to confirm this. I'm now on the platform ramp for the Fennel Street stop and I'm liking these new black barriers that provide protection from the road lanes on either side on the approach to the pedestrian crossing. Here is the location of this stop on the map. The platforms are in a similar state of completion to the other stops and the sloping ramps on either side provide step-free access. However, the track bed looks different with what looks like a darker asphalt covering. Here are some more of these double white lines and it's strange to see these within a stop. If you know their purpose, do share this in the comments below. Just north of this stop is another overhead wire pole and cantilever arm, and behind that is Harold Street. Back to 2018, and this is where the Fennel Street stop now is. Note the old bus stop lay-by on the right. And further up is the junction with Harold Street. This is how it looked in February 2022, shortly before the new traffic lanes came into use. And this is now. On the west side, Harold Street is now left in and left out. And that's also the case on the east side. These next two cantilever arms are tied to each other, which is why the one closest looks a little droopy. I think they will be long enough to cover both tracks. Now approaching the busy interchange with Pennant Hills Road. Over on the east side is Albert Street, which is one way towards Church Street with a left only turn. Then the start of Pennant Hills Road, then Church Street and the tram track straight ahead, and then the west side of Albert Street over on the left, where this car is turning into. This is how it looked in 2018, with Church Street having five lanes on the approach to this intersection. It was also possible to turn right into Pennant Hills Road, but not anymore. In fact, right turns from any of these roads are not allowed, so the possible turns at this intersection look like this. Again, removing some turning options at intersections will mean shorter red traffic light phases for trams. On the other side of this intersection is another long cantilever arm. Here it is from the other side. The one on the left looks like a cantilever arm too, but it's actually for the traffic light. Now continuing north along Church Street. St Patrick's Cemetery is over on the right, and you can see the raised edges again at each side of the track bed and planters with shrubs separate the pavement from the road lanes. The max speed for trams is 60 km an hour here, that's the highest I've seen on the street running section so far. Back in 2018, this part of Church Street also had four lanes, with two being for buses. The overhead wire poles have disappeared, but as I mentioned earlier, the street lighting poles seem to have fittings that could allow overhead wires to be attached. The track bed and traffic lanes on either side are now separated by planters, and the ongoing double white lines between the tram tracks continues to perplex me. So I'm now at the Factory Street stop, except it's not called that anymore, it's now called Benald Oval, and also here there will be a substation. This stop is at the top end of Church Street, just before the line turns left into Factory Street. At the pedestrian crossing, notice the change from concrete to what I think is asphalt. And here is a closer view. Notice the sloping platform ends and the black barriers that you saw at the last stop. 
and here are the platforms, ready and waiting for the canopies. Benord Oval will have a traction substation, one of seven in total. The locations of all of these are on this map, which I'll link to in the description below. It could be here, taking the space of this derelict dry cleaners building, or more likely on this block of land on the corner of Church Street and Factory Street. There used to be an apartment building here, and I reckon this was demolished to provide a gentler curve into Factory Street, and that has also left some space for a substation. And here is this curve into Factory Street, and as you can see, this is also a traffic light controlled intersection. Over on the right is the east side of Factory Street, which is one way towards Church Street. Then Church Street, which continues straight ahead, and now following the tram tracks to the west side of Factory Street. Left and right turns are available from all roads, except for the east side of Factory Street as it's one way. The tracks are further apart on this corner to allow for overhang, and there are no additional black strips or grooves that were on other curves. At the start of Factory Street is a pedestrian crossing, and then it's trams only, no double white lines this time. Now as this is such a gorgeous curve, here is one final look in the other direction, with the Benord Oval stop now coming into view. This is Galloway Street coming into view on the left. This is left turn only in and out. And along this section of Factory Street is a single lane for road vehicles on either side. These double yellow lines are probably to help larger vehicles turn left out of Galloway Street. Poles for the overhead wires are in place and you can see a speed limit sign on one of them. And the attachments on the poles are likely to be for the future cantilever arms. This is how this part of Factory Street looked in 2018. And now, with narrower planters replacing the grass verges, a few less trees and street parking removed to create space for the tram tracks. Now approaching the busy intersection with O'Connell Street, and this is the first time that this intersection has had traffic lights. Previously, there was a physical barrier in the road to prevent right turns. Right turns from either side of Factory Street are still not allowed. These traffic lights were installed within the last six months. Now looking back towards Church Street, and you can see the traffic lights in the distance and an array of poles for the future overhead wires. Now crossing O'Connell Street to continue along Factory Street, and there is still a single lane on either side for road vehicles. And the overhead wire poles continue as well. Notice the 15 km an hour speed limit signs on both sides of the tracks. Well that's for this single crossover junction. This will most likely be used to reverse a westbound tram that has terminated at the Nagara stop. And this brings us to the intersection with Fleet Street and New Street, which also never had traffic lights until now. Road vehicles in the left lane must turn left into Fleet Street, which is exactly what this driver isn't doing. Well, at least he indicated. This intersection used to be a T-junction with Fleet Street on the left and New Street on the right. And it still is a T-junction except for trams. I'm now at another stop that has had a change of name. This stop used to be called Cumberland Hospital, it's now called Nagara. And how this stop and the line got to here is quite interesting, so I'll show you this first. The line now passes this house on the right, and you can see a small car park. Well that's where the line continues and where the Nagara stop now is. The house on the left is still there. So here are both houses with the tram lines and the Nagara stop between them. The approach to the stop has this decorative tiling in the track bed, which continues into the stop itself. I think it looks rather good and provides a heritage feel. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. In the middle is an overhead wire pole. This is looking in the other direction towards Factory Street, the platforms are at a similar stage of completion to the other stops. This is looking back along Factory Street with the Nagara stop behind me. The new shared paths into the Cumberland Hospital grounds are now open and go right past this stop. This is on the south side. And there is a similar path on the north side too. Just beyond the Nagara stop is where the third and final green section starts and it's also where the overhead wires end. The last two poles are a few metres west of this stop to provide a short overlap with the wire free section. And like the poles on Factory Street, there are no cantilever arms as yet. There is a lower pantograph reminder sign in the westbound direction. 
and the corresponding raised pantograph sign for eastbound trams. So it's now wire free from the Nagara stop to the terminus at Westmead, and this includes the third and final green section, which starts immediately after this stop and continues to a new bridge over the Parramatta River. So the green track section starts immediately after this pedestrian crossing, and continues as the line bends slightly to the right. The shrubs on either side provide a physical barrier, as well as enhancing the look of the green track section. And notice how well the green track grass and shrubs blend in with the Cumberland Hospital grounds. Now a pedestrian crossing and then a road crossing. The pedestrian path starts at the Eastern Circuit Road and then crosses the tracks and then round to the right for the other parts of the hospital grounds, or to the left for a path leading to the Nagara stop. The Eastern Circuit Road also crosses the tram tracks before continuing towards the entrance on Fleet Street. As this is a quiet access road, there are no traffic signals. Instead, this level crossing star warning sign, which is currently taped over. Here is a flashback to February 2022. This was just after the soil had been added. The purple hoses will be used to provide irrigation for the grass, which will use reclaimed water. This is looking back towards the Nagara stop, and you can see that the overhead wire poles were already in place at this time too. Now continuing, and the Eastern Circuit Road is now behind me, and River Road is on the left. Unlike the road sections, I haven't noticed any asphalt in the rail flanges on the green track sections as yet. There is a 30 km an hour speed limit. This is probably for the bend to the left, and for three pedestrian crossings. This first crossing, and the others that follow, connect the hospital buildings with the grounds on the other side. Now continuing, and approaching the second crossing. The Cumberland Hospital has some wonderful heritage buildings, such as this one for the vocational training unit, which even has its own cafe. Once over the second crossing, the line becomes straighter. And it's not long before the third and final crossing appears. Again, notice the distinctive heritage buildings on either side. The hospital grounds will be a great place to see the tram testing when this starts. Back in February, you could see the fresh soil, drains and that last crossing being built. Lots of soil was also piled up within the Cumberland Hospital grounds, and work was happening seven days a week to get this section finished. Now on the straight section, and you can see some traffic signals in the distance. These are for the intersection with the other end of Eastern Circuit and Bridge Road. The tram traffic light on the left with the stop sign has four aspects, and the one on the other side which acts as a repeater has three. Why is that? To find out, I took a trip to Circular Quay, and as you can see, this traffic signal also has four aspects, and the one behind it has three. When a tram approaches, a white triangle appears on the fourth aspect, and this does not display on the three aspect repeater signal. This is then followed by the white T sign, which tells the driver that the tram can proceed through the intersection. then an amber T sign, and then back to a red T sign. At this intersection with the Eastern Circuit is the start of a new active transport path for walkers, runners and cyclists. This is to the right of the tram tracks, and it features some of the decorative tiles that you saw earlier at the Nagara stop. Now back on the tracks, and you can see the end of this green section in the distance. And although there wasn't any asphalt in the rail flanges until now, there is on this section. To the right of the new active transport path is Bridge Road. And now approaching the third and final crossing over the Parramatta River. There is another crossing just before this bridge, but it doesn't seem to go anywhere at the moment. And here is this new bridge, and this is also where the green track section ends. The bridge is 64 metres long and 13 metres wide, and it's a simple concrete design and it's dead straight. The familiar black grooves or stripes that were on the Lennox Bridge, featured in part 2, are also on this bridge. I believe these would provide some protection in the event of a derailment. This is how it looked back in February, with the tracks just starting to appear. This bridge also carries the new active transport path. Bridge Road and the old bridge for this road is now visible on the right. This is one of six new bridges that have been built to carry the Parramatta light rail over roads, paths, creeks and rivers. The other bridges are covered in this video appearing on the top right. 
This bridge is supported by a single pier that has three piles that go deep into the Parramatta River bed. The active transport path looks wider than other shared paths, and it has lighting too, and it's great to see this open. And from this path, I can get some different views of this bridge, such as this one panning from east to west. And this one looking east towards the green track section. It's now back to running alongside existing roads, but it's still wire free, so this is indicated in purple. The tracks immediately to the west of this bridge were some of the last to be laid, and back in February it looked like this, with the rails suspended and waiting for the concrete to be poured on either side. In the other direction, the rails were in place, but the active transport path was nowhere to be seen. Bridge Road continues on the right and is two way, and the active transport path follows this road and the tram tracks for a little while. This crossing provides access to the hospital accommodation on the left, with Bridge Road and the other Cumberland Hospital buildings on the other side. The line is now ascending slightly, and shrubs on either side provide a physical barrier, as well as creating a pleasing look. This intersection coming up is for Gardens Way. This is a local access road, so it has warning signs instead of traffic lights. There is a 20 km an hour speed limit here too. This is looking back towards the new Parramatta River Bridge. This is back in 2018, and it looks like some hospital land on the right was used for the tram tracks. Now continuing to ascend, with lots of new vegetation, especially on the right, between the active transport path and Bridge Road. Being on a gradient, a stormwater drain has been added here. Now getting closer to the intersection with Hainsworth Street which is where both Bridge Road and the new active transport path end. This is this intersection with Hainsworth Street in 2018, and as you can see, several properties and quite a few trees were removed to create space for the tram tracks. I think these properties were part of the Cumberland Hospital, but I'm not certain of that. The tracks now bend to the right to join Hainsworth Street. And as you've seen on other curves, the tracks are further apart again here to allow for overhang. All turns are possible, except for the right turn from Hainsworth Street to Bridge Road. Hainsworth Street has separate lanes for other road vehicles on either side of the tram tracks. So I'm now outside the stop that used to be known as the Children's Hospital at Westmead, where this stop has been renamed to Children's Hospital. I like the shorter name. The approach to the platform looks very different, with the black protective fencing on both sides. And that is because this stop has an island platform, as you can see here. The curves either side of this stop mean that the tracks are further apart anyway, so an island platform makes sense for this reason. This side will be used for trams heading to Westmead, with this side being for trams in the other direction. The Children's Hospital car park and medical centre is on the left. There are signalled pedestrian crossings on both sides to allow passengers to access this stop. Here is an artist impression of how this stop will look when it's finished. This is how Hainsworth Street looked in 2018. The trees on the right along with the parking and grass verges on the left have now gone. The stop starts where the grass verge on the left was and continues to this old roundabout that was outside the children's hospital entrance. So plenty of space for the tram tracks and this stop. Here is one final look at this stop and Hainsworth Street. The tracks now bend to the left as Hainsworth Street becomes Hawkesbury Road. The children's hospital entrance is on this corner, with vehicle movements including those over the tram tracks controlled by traffic lights. The track on the right has another one of these black grooves, but it's only adjacent to one track. Why is that? If you know, do share this in the comments. There is another pedestrian crossing and then a 2 metre flood marker. Hawkesbury Road also has a single lane for road vehicles on either side. And as it ascends slightly, there is a no left turn sign for Jesse Street, which is one way in the other direction. Just here are more double yellow lines to help larger vehicles turning left from Jesse Street. In 2018, Hawkesbury Road had parking bays, ramps and grass verges with trees on the right, so plenty of space for the future tram tracks. The next set of traffic lights is for a Westmead Hospital car park. There is no right turn into this car park, but departing vehicles can turn left or right. This is now looking back towards the Children's Hospital. Shortly after the car park junction is an entrance into Westmead Hospital, and this does have a right turn into it, which involves using part of the westbound tram track, as you can see here. But not if you're on a bicycle. I guess they will use the left lane instead, so they can cross the tracks more at right angles. Now just beyond this entrance, and there is another stop. So now it's the Westmead Hospital stop, so on the home straight, and yes, this stop looks like all the others. With the platforms at a similar level of completion. 
There is a pedestrian crossing on the approach, and like at the Fennel Street and Benald Oval stops, this is where the track bed changes to an asphalt finish that continues through this stop. This crossing on the other side is part of the intersection with Caroline Street, and it looks like the left and right turns in and out of this road are possible. Just beyond this junction, the traffic lanes continue to run on either side, with the left lane segregated by a vegetation planter. And more no cycling markings on the right turning lane. I'm assuming that cyclists can still turn right, but they should use the left lane instead. What do you think? It's then passed another hospital access road on the right, then a little further along, another crossing close to Queen's Road. And then to the busiest intersection on the whole line, which is for Darcy Road, which is on the right, and this also includes a bus T-way. The only turn that involves crossing the tram tracks is from Hawkesbury Road to Darcy Road, which is what this black car is doing now. All other turns are to and from the traffic lanes that are on the west side of the tram tracks, which potentially means that trams could run along these tracks at the same time. South of Darcy Road, Hawkesbury Road has two traffic lanes in each direction. Now for a short tram only section before the Westmead stop, and this sign indicates a crossover junction. And here it is. Just like at Parramatta Square, this is a double crossover junction. These are common at terminating stops, as they allow trams to access either platform easily. The tracks then widen on the approach to the Westmead stop, and this decorative tiling last seen in Parramatta CBD returns, along with this ramp, which isn't part of the platform. And here is the Westmead terminating stop, which as you can see has an Ireland platform. So that's two stops in total with Ireland platforms. This was taken on the 18th of September. Now five days later on the 23rd of September, and the canopy supports had appeared. Thanks to Jaden from New South Wales Trains Vlogs for this photo, linked to his channel in the description below. By the 1st of October, the canopy had appeared. These are assembled off-site and would have probably been installed overnight. The length of the canopies will vary between stops, with the busier stops and those close to venues that have major events having longer canopies. As you saw earlier at the Church Street stop, the additional supports will be used for station signage. I covered the canopies in more depth in part 1, which is appearing in the top right now. This vegetation area on the left separates this stop from the road, and could also allow a further platform to be added in the future. And at the end of the track bed here, and also here, is where the buffer stops are likely to go. Passengers can access this stop via these stairs from Railway Parade, or step free from the pavement using this ramp which is on the other side of this stop. Here are a couple of artist impression images of how this stop will look when it's finished. To create space for the Westmead terminating stop, this Commonwealth Bank building was demolished, along with this building with the round window, and this house on the corner. And this was how the railway parade intersection looked back then, which was in 2018. At the buffer stop's end is this interesting sign. This is because there is a charger in the ground, so this sign reminds drivers to lower a connector shoe to connect with this charger. No pantograph required. Very cool. And at the other end, there is a similar sign to remind drivers to raise the collector shoe before departing. And a CS sign. If you know what this stands for, do share this in the comments below. There is a substation at Westmead too, and according to this map, it looks like it's just east of this stop. So it could be this building behind the Lime High Voltage Unit. However, it contains a toilet, so this might be a staff amenities building instead. So that's the end of this Parramatta Light Rail update video and the end of the series as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do give this video a like, give it a thumbs up, do leave a comment or question below. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and also consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link with further details below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.